Oh my God, we are off the rails, guys. The, <laughs> speaking yeah. of off the rails, it's actually true because our main event topic this week. Oh, and I hope we have referees, therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, bouncers, botanists, botanists. security guards, botanists, cryptozoologists, whatever we need to keep these men apart from each other. Um, but Oasis is reuniting um, for some tour dates in 2025. We are in 2025, and we are getting an Oasis reunion tour before GTA 6. Say maybe, say maybe. Might be the one they say. Oh, uh, what was it? My, my wife came up with a decent joke on this. She said, um, she said something like, um, she said, I, uh, I don't know what it was, but she, she did the I said maybe joke. I said maybe, and I didn't get say it at maybe, first. Maybe. But no. Maybe. 2009, brothers Noel and Liam Gallagher had a drag down split. Yeah. It's yeah. been 16, well, 15 now, but it'll be 16 years between performances from Oasis. Um, and Oasis fans have been begging for a reunion for years, and it's finally happening. Now, I love how everybody is speculating that this is finally happening. So these dates are in 2025, <laughs> and when your last name is Gallagher, any fucking thing can go wrong between now and 2025. These guys make Simon and Garfunkel look like long-lost brothers. I mean, honestly. <laughs> I don't think Rommel and Patton had battles like that. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, so just to try to catch people up who may not know anything about Oasis, but um, Liam and Noel Gallagher of the iconic English rock band announced on Tuesday, again, it's been a couple of weeks, well, this was August 27th, um, that Oasis will play a series of shows in the UK and Ireland in the summer of 2025. So we have almost 12 calendar months for this to go fucky. And it probably will, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. yeah. Now, the reunion marks the first time in 15 years that the brothers are set to reunite. The group famously disbanded in 2009 when Noel Gallagher left due to a fight with younger brother Liam Gallagher. This is it. This is happening, the brothers wrote in identical posts on X early on Tuesday morning. Um, the Gallagher's confirmed. They pissed off in his picture. They, they, that's their go-to, bro. That's the They're wretched. That's the resting <laughs> oasis face. Okay. Now the Gallagher's confirmed fourteen shows spread over five cities. Now they're not going far. They're only going to Cardiff, Manchester, London, Edinburgh, and Dublin. And to be fair, that's probably all within an hour of each other. To be yeah. honest. Um, in July and August of 2025, uh, tickets will go on sale um, at 4 a.m. on the 31st of August. So that means they're for sale now, which means they're probably sold out, to be fair. Um, and, and honestly, there's all of these memes going about of how to get your money back once these get postponed or rescheduled yeah. or canceled. And the memes are great, right? I would just like to personally thank the Gallagher brothers for coming to back just for the memes, right? Just for the memes. Yeah. Now, plans are underway okay, for a for an Oasis Live 25 to go to other continents outside of Europe later next year, the tour's official website noted. Um, so, uh, let's see here. So, they're going to be at Cardiff Principality Stadium on the 4th and 5th of July. Manchester Heaton Park on the 11th and 12th and the 19th and 20th of July. Uh, London Wembley Stadium on the 25th and 26th of July and the 2nd and 3rd of August. They will be um, at Edinburgh Scottish Gas Murrayfield Stadium. Golly, bro. Like... Whoever made that sign should get paid by the letter. Um, anyway, <laughs> eight, the, they're playing there on the 8th and 9th. Jesus, you're going to have tickets this big just to put the fucking name of the yeah. venue. 8th and 9th of August. Let's just say that again. Edinburgh Scottish Gas Murrayfield Stadium. Wow. Um, they're also going to be at Dublin Croke Park on the 16th and 17th of August. Um, 
if if this actually happens. Now, Oasis is one of the most successful British rock bands of all time. They were formed in 1991 in Manchester and rose in popularity with brothers Liam and Noel Gallagher leading the group to stardom. The band grew in popularity in their native UK following the release of their 94 debut album, Definitely Maybe, which turns 30 later this week. Get out of here with that shit! 30! Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> so here's the question I have. I'm not going to read any more about this. Everybody knows who Oasis is. Is this <laughs> how much of this is financially motivated? Do you guys think? In other words, we're out of money, oh, mate. Yeah. Ninety-five percent. Ninety plus percent of it. So essentially, it's been fifteen 95 years. Ninety-five for money, five for ego. <laughs> you might be right. To be fair. But, like, when you go f 10 or more years of not doing something with somebody that you're related to, it's oh, yeah. probably beyond fixable, right? That's oh, just, yeah. just, I'm just going to throw that out there. So the fact that these two guys who have not spoken to each other for longer than a decade, all of a sudden are going on a reunion tour, that tells me they are both hard up for money. And that they're, yeah. I hate to say it like that because I love music and I love creative and all that. But it's pretty clear to me that these guys didn't just make up and were like, you know what, let's go out on the road together, mate. Yeah. That, that's not how that rolls, right? Like, I don't know. I, I see stuff like this, and I and I just feel like it's... Especially timing, like you just said, 30 years yeah. since that. It just, yeah. it's, it's, it just, I hate the words money grab, but that's what this feels like to me. Like, yeah. When I see bands get back together that were notoriously apart... Like Simon and Garfunkel is a really good example um, for my, good. yeah, because like they were, they needed each other. I hate to say it, man, but like Paul Simon is amazing. One of the best songwriters in the history of the world, but without Garfunkel singing his songs, he's not nearly as known today as he, I mean, he should be, but he's not. I mean, that just goes to show you, um, when you perform your own songs, it's not always a good thing. And I love Paul Simon. I'm not, like, don't sh throw no shade at me. I'm just saying yeah. when they were together, they made more money. That's just a fact of matter. And and it was very ego. That's what broke them up all the time yeah. was ego. Like, they could not get along, period. They just couldn't. You know, I, I, would, I would hope that, that they at least got through three rehearsals before they started booking these shows. <laughs> You're talking Oasis here. I, I'm a, yeah, I'm, I'm talking out. Oasis. Yeah. I would hope I would so, hope. too. And I, and I would hope they're, they're doing this somewhat for the love of the music as well. I don't think that's the case, though, to be fair. I, I just don't, and I hate that because I'm wondering... You know, it, it, this almost feels like an experiment here, right? Like, we're going to do some yeah. shows that Best are within the waters. yeah, within an hour of the house, and if these go well, then yes. we'll do more on other continents, right? I mean, that's essentially what they're saying. And so they're putting out these five to ten shows or whatever. First of all, they want to see if people are going to even show up. I mean, yeah. I imagine. But, I mean, this is Oasis, though. People are showing up. Yeah, people will show up, I think. But then getting along is the bigger issue, of course. <laughs> yeah. I think they should play it up. Have fun with it. Put a referee in between them on stage. Like, For real, like just... system of a down. Or, like, get one of those cages, like two of those cages they use in the wrestling, the elimination chamber, and just, like, put a <laughs> mic stand in, in, in each of the cages. That shit would be funny. Like, they have a chance to do some That's funny shit before. here. Yeah. See who can sing loudest. That would be great. But yeah, I, I I think this is probably financially motivated. I don't know if one or both are are, are hurting. I, I don't yeah. think they should be. I mean they they should have some pretty good royalties on their shit and like They still get mailbox money, man. You oh absolutely. That's why like when I see this kind of stuff it worries me. Cause with, with Simon and Garfunkel, they always got back together because they needed money. Period. Sonny and Cher used to do the same shit. Absolutely. You know, they would just, oh, we'll do this special. Well, Sonny and Cher or Simon and Garfunkel special. Like, SNL used to take care of that shit all the time. Oh, we'll have Sonny, we'll, we'll have um, Simon and Garfunkel be our musical guest. 
and then they go their separate ways. But God, they got seven figures for that one damn show. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, I hope it's. I hope they they can get back together. I mean, it sucks when you're related to somebody that you don't get along with. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. That's the worst, man. That's the, yeah. that's the worst. Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you, I'm sure you know a little bit about this, too. Being out there on the road with somebody that you really don't like is, man, it's tough. It's, it's, I, can't, it's tough. I can't even imagine because, like, I mean, you're literally in each other's face all the time. You can't get away from yeah. that because, and, and you have to be on the same page. Um, you're in the same band together. You have to pull on the okay. same side of the rope. You can't just not talk. <laughs> right. Same. Yeah. You have to get four guys in the same place at the same time on the same page. You know, so just, what's you your know, over like, under on a number of concerts that get canceled? I'm going to say half. You think at least half are going to get canceled? I mean, from what you said, I'm, I'm going to say a lot. Because like you said, they're all really damn close to each other. If they don't sell that good, they're just gonna be like, "Okay, well, we're not gonna go to this place. We're gonna go to this place instead." Yeah. See, I don't think I don't think selling is gonna be the problem at all here. Like, I think you know, I think they're gonna. This is Oasis, man. Like this. I mean, yeah, I don't know though. It's not like we're talking about a rat reunion here, right? I mean, this is Oasis, bro. No, I know, but I mean, it's it's not my time. So I mean, I I just look at that like, you know. Like, I wouldn't go see it. By the way, I would be stoked about a rat reunion. I'm just saying. It's your... Oh, my God. Don't get me started. I'm trying, dude. Like, I've been talking to Steve for a couple of weeks. I'm trying to convince him to do an interview. Oh, I would fucking die, dude. So, my two, my two favorite bands, I know you could probably... You will, you will attest to this, I think. You, you can appreciate this. My two favorite 80s bands are not what anybody else would ever say. A lot of people might say Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, Led Zeppelin, um, Poison, Bon Jovi. No, for me, it was White Lion and White Lion. and Rat. Those are my two, man. I loved those two bands. The White Lion, they did Wait? Is they did Wait, songs? yep, they did Wait, yeah. and they did uh, When the Children Cry. Those when were... the Children Cry, yes, I remember both so, of those songs. I literally just interviewed Mike Tramp. He wrote both of those songs. Wait, how was that? How much that was all was fucking amazing. <laughs> and now I'm talking with Stephen Piercy um, through DMs and stuff and hoping, I'm, just, I'm hoping, I'm trying to convince him. But um, I'm like, look, I did Mike, now i got to do you, and I'll have my f- two favorite 80s vocalists. But... Right on. Um, That's what's up. 